Hey, it's Kelly Lemon from the Virginia Wayside Furniture Studio for another episode of 8 at 4 presented by Massey Cancer Center, where we're highlighting eight topics you should know about in Central Virginia. And this week, we're talking real food, biscuits and cider. Let's do it. Breakfast food can be one of the best meals of the day. Call it brunch and it's even better. And when the dairy bar closed, there was a definite void. Enter Biscuits and Gravy. I'm Ryan Oliver. I'm the Director of Operations for Tang and Biscuit and Biscuits and Gravy. I am from Louisiana, born and raised, moved up to Richmond about eight years ago and I was a chef in Louisiana for a while, ran restaurants down there. We tried to stick with a lot of the traditions the dairy bar had, so like just a general breakfast plate, so like pick your protein, your eggs, your bread, you know, that kind of thing for, you know, a value play. Our vibe is trying to hold diner traditions and trying to uphold the tradition of the dairy bar itself, but then also trying to elevate certain items and come out of left field with some things that people possibly haven't seen before on a plate, like a breakfast lasagna or huevos nacheros, as opposed to famous rancheros or like our smash plate with green chili sauce on it. We still have scrambled eggs, French toast, you know, waffles that are that are good. You can go out and get it and not break the bank for it. Over here is more of a menu of love for me because I, I really enjoy breakfast. It's my favorite meal of the day. I think it's a very communal meal. It's uh, breakfast and dinner are the times you either like talk about last night or you talk about your day. And I think those are very um, good things to have in our community. Like a, a meal together is very an intimate occasion. And so. I like the fact that we have breakfast and like a southern down home breakfast with some New Orleans influence. So I think that's all good vibes for us. I'll meet up with Ryan again later in this episode. We're all looking for ways to support our future and black girls need as much of that support as others. Check out Angela Patton in the community of growth and support that is Girls for a Change. Girls for Change is a nonprofit organization based right here in Richmond, Virginia, and our mission is to prepare black girls for the world and the world for black girls. Girls for Change was started because I was literally looking out of the window in my community and saw that black girls were unheard, they were not seen or celebrated, and I wanted to stand in the gap we make sure that our girls think about issues in their community, that they want to see change, and they have a space where they feel like their voices are amplified. They feel really comfortable and confident in sharing their truth. And then they tackle the issues and come up with solutions. And then they go out into the community and create action projects so that they can see things change in the community, not to only benefit them, but the community overall. We also make sure that our girls are ready for the world. Some of the successes that we have seen at Girls for Change is really with every program that we have. This summer at Camp Diva, 80% of our staff are our own alumni, providing the same services that were provided to them when they once were little girls. And that's how we build a community. The new Virginia Cider Trail Digital Passport is looking to highlight the growing number of cideries in the Commonwealth. We visited with Will Correll of Busty Cider to hear more. We're excited to be part of this new Virginia Cider Trail. That's something you can log in and see all the cideries around the state. There's a lot more than you probably think there are. Uh, and that really comes back to what an amazing Apple state we are. Virginia has got an amazing cider history. So our founding fathers were growing uh, cider from apples. Uh, these apples were um, specifically for cider, so nice tannin content, nice uh, sugar levels, good acidity. Uh, we still have some of those apples. Virginia's very lucky to have uh, really famous cider making apples, but also really wonderful uh, dessert or culinary apples. Uh, both of them make great cider. Uh, so Virginia has um, mostly family farms still, uh, which is really unique. We opened a little over six years ago when people said, why cider? They were truly 
confused why someone would want to make cider. For most people, cider was just this mass-produced, um, sugary, sweet uh, product that you know gave cider some of its connotation that people are sometimes negative about. Um, since then, we've seen a huge resurgence of really small craft um, cideries that both match kind of the, like the quality and persona of the wine industry that you see at farm wineries, but also like the purity and creativity you see in the craft beer industry. Some places are going to offer a special or a, a giveaway, so we're giving away a couple koozies uh, when you check in and show our staff you checked in on the passport. It's a cool program that was headed up by the American Cider Association um, to celebrate just what a great cider state Virginia is and hope you'll want to be part of it. From apples to all things healthy and just eating and being happy, we're talking real food with gratitude. I am Katie Brown and I own and however you want to call it, Real Food with Gratitude LLC. I want to show people that you can live a healthy and balanced life. How much brain power I was using to think about when am I going to work out? What am I going to eat? What am I going to make for dinner? Is this healthy? Should I be eating right now? And it was so overwhelming that I decided to take it into my own hands and figure out how to create a lifestyle for myself. So that is how I started my Instagram and then it just continued. I then went back to school and got my um, nutrition consulting degree. It's got to taste good, but you also got to feel, feel good eating it mentally and physically. Your body feels good when it's less chemicals, less process, less who knows where this is from. Your body is able to kind of recognize it a little better. In my head, that equals eating local. So it's a win-win. But then you got to, you know, do some home cooking as well and feel good about that. So I think that is the definition of also balancing. It's not just about like, oh, I eat salads or oh, I don't. That's not healthy or unhealthy. It's how can you just find what you enjoy and learn how to make it a more healthy way. All you got to do is figure out which vegetables do you like? Which lettuce do you like? What protein do you like? And then, you know, learn how to like whip up some random sauces that could literally just be like mustard and mayonnaise and ketchup whisk that up that's your sauce for the week like what it, or olive oil and, and mustard for like a little dressing once you kind of learn those things you can get those things on the side and do that on your own but then every week you go to the grocery store you're not like okay i'm gonna make these three crazy recipes and then you have to go find all the ingredients no Follow Katie on IG at Real Food with Gratitude for combinations, simply healthy meals, and even recipes on biscuits, which is sending me back to Scott's edition for some tang and biscuits. Ready to play shuffleboard, huh? The object is to shoot your biscuit with your tang down to the other end. Yellow always starts. And this is the tang. Yes. And that's the biscuit. It is. Hence the name. Hence the name. Okay. To score, you have to be flush in the blue space. So if you're here and you're touching the black, that is not a scoring point. The only line that matters is this guy. So if you're still in this one, it's still negative 10. Mm. All right. <laughs> then if you're shooting this way and you see those two lines with that blank space in the middle right there, that's called the dead zone. So if we shoot a biscuit in there, that is not a defensive position. So you can't play defense there and we would have to remove that biscuit before the next shot. Nothing cancels, it's not like cornhole. You play across from your teammate or if we're playing one-on-one, uh, -on -one, this is how we would play. But if we had a teammate, they would be on the other side. And then you can either play uh, eight frames or you can play to 75. Those are usually what we tell our guests to do. You wanna keep contact with the floor. Yeah. as best as possible and you want to come up to it like this and then you just kind of use your momentum and push it it's more of a push than a like stab they all play differently just because of how they're built i mean they're leveled out to the degree you need to be leveled out but some might have a little more wax on them because the courts are waxed some biscuits might slide differently because we wax those at the beginning of the shift so depending on how many divots or how much wax is on it it'll play either faster or slower there you go you got some heat on that one Staying with the food theme, we've got more restaurants opening this month. And here's a look at just a few. 
The Richmond restaurant scene continues to expand in the new year with spots spanning tacos, breakfast fried chicken, and sweets. If you've ever ordered cheesecake at Latitude or O'Toole's, you've tried the confections of Say Cheese Cake. Owner Cheryl Whitman opened the business almost three years ago to fulfill a lifelong dream and found success selling mini and full-size cheesecakes in myriad flavors online to restaurants out of a commissary kitchen in Stony Point Fashion Park. In January, she converted the kitchen to Verso Bistro, a full cafe that's open to the public. The latest location of Brick House Diner is in the former location of Kitchen 64. It opened on February 7th with a refreshed interior and menu favorites from the other locations, along with American-style breakfast and lunch and a few Greek favorites. Brick House offers mimosas, breakfast shooters, crushes, and coffee drinks. Initial hours will be from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And located in the former home of Brew House in Shaco Bottom, Chicken Beer fills a tender-shaped hole left in the area when Hot Chick closed to become part of Eat Restaurant Group's Scott's Edition Food Hall, opening later this year. And is the second location from the owners of a popular fried chicken spot, Chicken Crave, in Jackson Ward. As the name implies, the menu features chicken wings with eight different sauce options, chicken tenders, chicken sandwiches, biscuits, and Cajun-style fries. During happy hour from 3 to 9 p.m. daily, you can also buy one beer and get a second for $2. And that's a look at just some of the restaurants opening in February. With spring on the horizon, expect more murals going up. We took another look around the city to see the current artwork that's adding color and life to the street. Despite having made lists for dining, attractions, and the most recent list of best places to party before you die, Richmond is surprisingly slow to make a list for cities with the best street art. The street art scene in the city has been growing steadily in recent years, thanks in part to the Richmond Mural Project, the Street Art Festival, and most recent Mending Walls Project initiated by Hamilton Glass. The art in our city is still special, though. In some cases, you'll catch a nod to businesses of the past, while other areas show the future. We celebrate neighborhood icons and global icons. Richmond street art has a little bit of something that will probably blow your mind. Things to get a message across, or in some cases, just things. But wherever you're coming from or however you look at it, Richmond Street Art has something that will catch your eye. While we were walking the streets for the art, we stopped in to Candela Gallery on Broad Street for an education on photography. Welcome to Candela Books and Gallery. We are a photography focused publisher and gallery space. We put out about a book or two a year and then the rest of the year we are mainly focused on programming the gallery exhibitions which change out about every two months and the openings always coordinate with First Fridays. Our mission is to really bring notable photographers to town and educate people what's going on in photography. Sometimes you'll walk in we'll have solo exhibitions by artists from all over the country and then sometimes you'll come in and we'll have themed group shows on the wall and oftentimes we're trying to bring those artists here for those openings and events so first Fridays you might come in and be able to meet an artist based out of a different state in a different place and um, learn about their processes and what they're doing. We are in our 11th year as a gallery. This summer we have our largest group exhibition that happens every July. On the walls right now we have 40, 50 artists from all over, international, national, couple inv invited artists, and really we are showing a survey of different ways people are using photography. One night a year we fundraise and we purchase work from the wall, and all that money goes to supporting participating artists. So July 30th is our Unbound Gala, we'll have live music, here, food, and you can check that out at candelagallery.com. All right, that's it for another episode of 8 at 4 presented by Massey Cancer Center, where they invite you to imagine a future without cancer. I'm Kelly Lemon, and we'll see you next time.